So on the base of the sweet will of Gurudev, we will go on finding quotes of Chaitanya Trayad Amrita in different scriptures, like here in Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi from Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, and the commentaries of Srila Ananda Das and Babaji. So the next quote I found in Radharasa Sudanidi is in verse number 62. And like always, first we hear the topic and then we hear the quote in the connection. So verse number 62, I will read the verse. Sri Radhika, the lovely queen of Vrindavan's bower houses, makes all spiritual goals and practices insignificant when she bestows the festival of her service. She inundates the whole world with the news of her nectarian beauty and her face shines like innumerable autumnal moons. Sri Radha, the lovely girl of the Bowers. Sri Radhika, the lovely queen of Brindavan's Bower houses, makes all spiritual goals and practices insignificant when she bestows the festival of her service. So this actually is the fitting verse to the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What he's doing when he comes in this world? Is he preaching? Is he leaving 10 tons of books of good advices? No. It just leaves eight verses, Shiksha Ashtakam. And this is just the praise of the holy name and how to chant it. So the only thing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us is the pure love of Radharani and the mood of her service in Manjari Bhav. And with that gift, because it is Radharani, Krishna is there observing Radharani's love, her mood, her love for him. And by fulfilling this aspect and others, in the mood of Radha, with the shining of Radha, he makes all the spiritual goals and practices insignificant like that. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving what Radhika wants to give us. And so she inundates the whole world with the news of her nectarian beauty and her face shines like innumerable autumnal moons. This is the description not only of the face of Radha but also the face of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So Sri Radha, the lovely girl of the bowers, is coming and spreading her glories. Unknown to the people in this world. Hidden. So today, Sri Patsi Sri Radha, as Vrindavan's Manchu Krihini, the lovely housewife decorating the Kunja, as if it was her house, de decorating the Kunja like it would be her house. The lovely hands of the lovely housewife decorate the bower in a lovely way. Everything is manju or lovely. While Srimati decorates the bower, a wonderful golden luster gushes from her beautiful form gushing out it shines through it's gushing out you cannot hold it back it's so shining nothing can cover it even if you try to cover it it's gushing out this is the shining of our radha and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This nectarian beautiful news of Lavanyam Ritavarta elegance. The Amrita, the nectar of elegance, inundates the whole world. In other words, what to speak of those who were so fortunate to see the luster of pure love. Even those who heard about it, like we now, we just hear about it. So even those who heard about it are inundated by the flood of divine love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the mood and luster of Sri Mati Radha to inundate the whole world with a flood of divine love. In the external world, rivers may inundate the land during the rainy season. But Sriman Mahaprabhu's rivers of love inundate the inner course of everyone's hearts with floods of divine love. What a wonderful description! And I was thinking about Radharani when she is going on Abhisa. It is also said that she is going like the Ganges, like the river Ganges, high flooded and inundates the whole area. When you see, you have uh, a, raining, a rainy season and the water is coming up and flooding everything. Then the land on the right side and on the left side is completely flooded, right? And this is compared to Radharani's families. Two families, her own and her family-in-law, are flooded by that love. What does it mean for us 
when it comes in our heart, this flood of Radharani, that all our family connections here in this world will be also flooded. It is said it is hard to come out of the twelve, the householder twelve, because of the family connection. But Radharani's mercy is helping us in that way. Jai Gurudev. My obeisances and loving hugs. So, whatever attachment we may have, and usually the family attachments are the biggest, it will be flooded. And in this way, it's just gone. You don't, have an, you don't even have to think about how to leave. It will be just gone, flooded, by the purest love possible. But Sriman Mahaprabhu's rivers of love, rivers, not just one, rivers of love, inundate the inner course of everyone's heart with floods of divine love. And in this connection, it's also very interesting that actually the seven oceans of Radharani's qualities are also in that river of her. Isn't that amazing? Usually you don't have an ocean in a river, right? But in that river, in that Ganga of Radhika's love, passion, there are oceans included. And they, these floods, these waters will hit us. So we are so lucky. Everything which we could be attached will be thrown away. Isn't that the mercy? It just gives a little picture of the mercy of Radharani, which is coming to us through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we may think, we may read this Radharasa Sudhanidhi in connection with Radharani, but Srila Anandadas is always giving us the hint, giving us the link to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non-different from Radharani's mercy and love, from Radhika. So again the verse, Sri Radhika, the lovely queen of Brindavan's bower houses, makes all spiritual goals and practices insignificant when she bestows the festival of her service. So this is actually the mercy of persons like Gurudev. They are giving us this quintessence. If you are going directly in the seva of Radharani, you can forget all other goals and practices immediately. You don't have to care about them. Because in Sita Deha, you are connected with the seva of Radharani's lotus feet. Everything is done. That's it. All other goals, all other practices are insignificant in that moment when we get the festival of her service. That's why it is so important to immediately go for your Sita Deha. 
we need our spiritual body to serve her. Otherwise, it's not possible. So this is the shortest way. And this is given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So if we want to get the mercy as fast as possible, we should accept that way. But anyway, we are free in joys. We can also go longer ways. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the essence, Gurudev is giving the essence, so we could take the short way. And also because everything what Radharani is doing, as we heard, everything, what she, whatever she is touching, whatever she is doing, is manju. Lovely. Also, this path given by her to us is lovely. It has nothing to do with renunciation. It has nothing to do with kyan. You cannot earn it in any way. You cannot reach it by sadhana. It's pure mercy of Radharani. Ganga Yamuna Brayak Narilo Dubaite Brabu Dubailo Krishna Premera Bonyate Chaitanya Chari Amrita Matya Lila 19 The Ganga and Yamuna The Ganga and Yamuna together could not inundate Brayak Allahabad But Mahaprabhu managed to inundate the place with a flood of love for Krishna. So why? How he could do that? That is because he accepted Sri Radha's bodily luster. So now we may think why this question is here. I mean, he is Krishna, he can do that. Really? There was a Krishna incarnation before, did he do it? No, he didn't. So without Radha's mood, without her love, without her passion in the love, without her mercy, he cannot. Even Krishna can not. That's why this sentence is here. That is because he accepted Sri Radha's bodily luster. And of course her mood. Otherwise, not possible. So in this way we can understand slowly the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the grace of our Swamini. How merciful Radharani is. So you are all lucky. The day of her birthday is coming more near. And you're all busy already in the seva. I could see on Radharasyam cleaning seva and all different kind of sevas are already going on. Lucky persons, please leave a little bit of the dust of your feet here. Mercy is needed. Otherwise, the engine is not working.
The engine of bhakti needs mercy. So please, you're all invited, like always, to share on that. This is the first quote I found here for today. So whenever you have some feelings, some questions, or maybe Gurudev is so kind and give us some hints that we can develop more. Radhe Radhe Garavani. Radhe Radhe Sunidhi Devi. I I would like to pick up the subject that Gurudev was shortly touching yesterday in in the question. I think it was you or Braja Sunari that how is all the modes of Rindavan Parakya? Not only. Radha and Krishna's secret love, but all in Goloka Vrindavan, all the feelings they are exchanging with each other, they are parakya. And Gurudev, I don't know, I try to meditate about this. My feeling was, maybe you correct me, and also Gauravani, I would like to hear your feelings, or anyone else who was Hearing this, in one sentence, good if you said parakia means that which is forbidden, but it was given. So I felt good if like all the rasas, they are kind of like in God consciousness, they are forbidden. We will never put diapers on baby Krishna. Like they do here in Vrindavan, and uh, the uh, the ladies, they will always say that, oh, he didn't eat enough, I have to cook more, and then how he's stealing the rice. They have this personal exchange, and usually we don't have this exchange with God or with the divine, because we are always more in this mood, I am yours. So this, I understand, good. If, and please uh, correct me, that parakya bhav is that you are mine, and from this feeling is like a new dimension is opening. And this new dimension of this lokic satpandu, like a worldly friend, or like a close sakka, and like a baby, or a child, or the, you know, um, our, uh, the beloved of my Swamini, all these feelings are coming, although I have no idea that uh, how it is happening. So that is how I understood that is Paraki above in Rindavan, which is all pervading, because all the bridge bosses, they never think that Krishna is God. For them, he is their Lala and their baby, that, you know, their friend, trying to play hide and seek. And this was never given before, because before all that was given was this God consciousness of divine Vishnu taking different, different forms to please his devotees. But this Paraki above, it is the highest and most pure relationship because all the Brajbasis have no selfish desire. And for us in this material world, this is like a very strange thing. Because we are full, usually, of selfish desires. By the mercy of Chaitanya, maybe, this transformation can happen. Is that the right understanding, Guru, if how they are all parakya? That was not given. But it is existing there. Yes. 
seems like Gurudev is busy. Okay, then. Gauravani, please express your feelings because I wrote this also to you. Maybe you didn't read it. Uh, yes, I read it, but too late to answer. So, uh, for me, there are different kind of levels of understanding of that, actually. So, yes, I would say that's one view you just mentioned. There are others. But how to... Usually you have to meditate on that, actually. But let's give a little hint. In Radharani's, all rasas are inside. All. If we say parakya, usually we mean very confidential lilas in nivritini kunjas. So, but... In that kind of love, of course, all other kinds of exchange of love is inside. As we know, Radharani has also elderly love inside and friendly and all, all rasas are inside. So we can say that in all exchange in Vrindavan, in the connection with Radha, there is always the highest taste included if we can feel or taste that, that's another point we have to meditate on. It depends on our connection and our feelings in that connection. So the form of our Sambandha and the Rasa. So in one sentence, I could hear how Krishna is speaking with his mother and the mother is concerned when he goes in the forest and he's telling, please stay in the shadow and all these kinds of warnings. And Krishna is answering and saying, yes, my dear mama, we will stay in the shadow. And so many petals are on the ground, very soft. You could understand this speech also on another level, but on this you have to meditate. Because what he is meditating the whole day? On what he is meditating the whole day, wherever he is? On what Radharani is meditating the whole day? wherever she is. So in this connection, we could get another picture of the same topic. So there are different levels to, to, to go in, to meditate on that, actually. Mm. Everyone looking at the world through their own mood. Manjari will see world through the uh, mood of Manjari. And uh, who is in Parakya Baba will see the world in Parakya Baba. Baba means not only mood, but it means world. For example, then. <clears throat> Mother Yashoda arranged for Radhika gifts in box. It's from book Chimatkara Chandrika. Maybe you remember this. Four stories for a Kadish night. One box, treasure box with many nice things. And she gave some blessings in words to Radhika. And then Abhimanyu brought this. He also brought the, this message to Radhika. One way how Abhimanyu hear this message, it's one thing. <laughs> but the way how Shimati Radhika and her girlfriends in Majari hear this message, is other way. <laughs> I see it like this. Radhika. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, Radha Charan, this 
gives a very nice example. And I just thought about the example when Radharani and Krishna are playing like small kids on the streets of Raj. Then the elder ladies who are in motherly love, they just see very small Radha and very small Krishna playing together. But how does the Manjari see that same picture, the same scene on the street, in a complete different light? So definitely, Parakya is everywhere in Vrindavan. It would not exist without, because Radharani's, it's Radharani's place. <laughs> what to say more? It's her place. And she consists of all Rasas in the highest form possible. She is the highest servant of Krishna. So one and one in our world makes two, but in the spiritual sky it's one. Everything is in Radha. So, so lucky we are that we could get in the connection with that person. Aradhika, whoever wants to serve Krishna in what form ever, he has to take shelter of that person, of Radharani's lotus feet. Otherwise, his service will never be complete. So he will be not successful in the end. He will not gain full success. So. Lucky, lucky we are that we met a person who has a very deep understanding, who can give us the quint essence, who can give us a connection to that person, to Sri Radha, and hand us a possibility to serve her. How lucky we are, and how lucky we are that we can hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that we can hear the Lila Rasa of Radharani with her beloved, and then we can meditate to be there, not only in the Kunjas, not only in the Nikunjas, but in the Nivriti Nikunjas, which is most close, intimate, very intimate, most intimate. And everything else about God consciousness. <laughs> We should forget as fast as possible. <laughs> and that's the point why it has to be hidden. If you are walking on the street and meet a person who is very religious and you say, you know, this God, he is sitting at, at home with me. He's eating sweet rice. I cook with Radharani together and he's eating. I help my Swamini to cook and then this boy is eating that and he likes it so much. What they would do with you? Got you in prison for psychological health or kill you or whatever, you know? They cannot accept in God consciousness this is ridiculous. This is an offender. This is a, a mental not a not straight mental person, he's sick, right? Like, I remember one story which really happened. I mean, really happened. It's not just a story. In Stuttgart, in Germany, in the night, three o'clock morning, police stops 
a bicycle with a person on it because this person was going over red light three o'clock in the morning so they ask her what are you doing three o'clock in the morning and why you pass the red light what is so emergent that you have to go what is your emergency she is answering I have to wake up Krishna. You know Krishna is God. I have to wake up God. What do you think what this policeman thought? We have to bring her in a hospital, huh? <laughs> she has to wake up God. <laughs> So that's why we understand it has to be hidden. You cannot openly discuss such things without getting trouble. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he made it in such a clever way. First, he was the most prominent, well-known, first-class, Kiani. He defeated everyone. Everyone was defeated by him in arguments, in logic arguments, in knowledge of Vedanta and so on. And after everyone knew him to be the top, most learned scholar in all these things, he dropped all this knowledge down and start to sing the holy name. In this way, he showed the world what they can do with their kyan. What is about this kyan? What about this proud scholars and all this? It gives a very clear picture, isn't it? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing very nicely that forget about this. And now the scholars are talking about him. What is this mad person doing? He's just singing Hare Krishna. Is he really Maybe he's really going crazy? It's a very clever way to establish this loving chanting of the Holy Name. Isn't it? But this is just one little example. And he's giving us the highest possible seva. And this makes all other spiritual goals and practices insignificant. And this is because of Sri Radhika the lovely queen of Brindavan's powerhouses. Because she makes all spiritual goals and practices insignificant when she bestows the festival of her service. And what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Radha and he's giving the seva to Radharani's lotus feet, to herself. She's giving her manjari. Seva, she's distributing. She lets taste Krishna, that Seva, because he wanted, and in the same moment distributing it everywhere. So how lucky we are that we are living in this Kali Yuga which is the worst yuk. And of course, we can see outside. 
<laughs> it's really w the worst. But still, for us, it's the luckiest moment because this is distributed freely. In other ages, not possible. It wasn't there. It seems like a very special offer, isn't it? You know these special offers when you go in some building, you can buy everything and then there are some tables filled with something. Special offer, you know. Very cheap, very special offer. And this Nitai is distributing everywhere. Special offer. Radadasiam. For everyone. Isn't that amazing? Get one for free. You just have to want it. That's it. So amazing grace. Like Suniti was singing once, I remember in a bhajan. Amazing grace. Yes, this is amazing grace. Gurudev, maybe you want to give some light on that, that we can grow. What again? Can you say? Gauravaniji, sorry, Govinda Mokini want to share. Oh, as you like. Uh, I was meditating on the theme uh, which was given to Radhika in this verse, because different verses and different names. And here the name was Manju Grihini, yes, uh, tender housewife. And when I was listening to your feelings and your explanation, uh, I was somehow was think, uh, thinking about why here such a name. And uh, one idea came to me, and I also I want that you share your um, your feelings. But it came to me that uh, why she is housewife and why Kunja is her house. Because only at home we can feel safe and we can feel ourselves. We are not afraid to put off our masks, yes, our different identities. And uh, at home we are as we are. So Krishna, and I remember the words of Srila Narayana Maharaj, and he used to say that with, uh, with gopis, Krishna is uh, exclusively beautiful, but with Radhika, he is the most beautiful ever. And Manjaris, of course, they know it. <laughs> so, uh, Kunja is the real home of Krishna because only with the topmost friend, heart friend of him, he could be himself. So, he is taking off all his masks, yes, and he's feeling safe and loved and accepted and relaxed. So, like this. Thank you very much. You made up another wonderful point, actually. And this is what Gurudev actually was telling us so often. Maybe, Gurudev, you want to give us again this, this picture, how we see it in our Kriha. Because Sri Rata is called here Brindavan's Manchu Krihini. And how we can serve her in Bhajana Kriya.
So maybe <laughs> so Gurudev Radharani is called Brindavan's Manjukrihini, the lovely housewife, decorating the Kunja as if it was her house. And it is in the connection with the Ganga and Yamuna could not inundate Pariyak, but Mahaprabhu managed to inundate the place with a flood of love for Krishna. And that is because he accepted Sri Radha's bodily lustre. Manju Girini Aha. Manju Girini means Radha. Manju Girini means very balanced and very practically to manage the things. Softly. If you see, in her circumstances, Jatila and Kutla is always disturbing to her. Right? Yes. And many difficulties were there. But she is a difficulty was too much. But in, she never bothered for difficulty. She never prayed for difficulty. She is always balancing in every difficult circumstance. That's a Manju Grihim. She has a one pointed goal on the Krishna. She never talk about her problems of the motherly mother-in-law and sister-in-law. She never bothered because she is Manju Grini, very soft, very kind, and patience to listen to her. But the goal was fixed in her. To her. And that way, the flow of Jamna and Ganga is coming from her. The love, purity of love is Ganga, and Jamna is a Krishna. Nothing else. She never without that flow. Of love flow. So when the person who enter in the divine love, many difficulties come in love. But Manju Grini, we have to do that. The teaching has to be balanced. Radha. Thank you very much. So that is our example, like always. Swamini is showing us, and we can then at home try to be at her lotus feet in the same mood and try to always lovely be in our Kriha.
for me, it seems impossible if we don't get this mercy to do so. So we need to have this mercy of the persons who are in that love, who dwell in that love. And this is handed down in the parampara. So this was the point here in verse number 62. And there's another quote from Madhya Lila, chapter 8. So how Sri Rata is the ultimate goal of life, making all other human goals insignificant is elaborately, uh, elaborately explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, Chapter 8, where Ramananda Roy and Lord Chaitanya have a lengthy discussion about it and come to this conclusion. Ihara Machira Dhara Prema Satya Shiromani Yahara Mahima Sarva Shastrete Vakani Of these, the love of Radha is the crown jewel of all golds of life, which is glorified by all the scriptures. Uh, I remember that Prabhupada said, If you are going out, wie sagt man Jagd? Suniti, Didi? Nicht mehr da. Yes, yes, I am here. I'm ah, listening. Okay. If you are going out of what? Jagd, wie sagt man auf die Jagd? Oh, for hunting. Ah, if you are going out for hunting, Prabhupada said. Und wie sagt man Nashorn? Oh, wie heißen die nochmal? Nosehorn. <lacht> Keine Ahnung. Unicorn. <lacht> Keine Ahnung. This with this one horn. Very, very strong animal. If you are going out for hunting, you should go for that, because this is the most difficult to get. He said mm. like this. Rino, yes, thank you very much. Rino, yes. Yes. Nina boy, thank you very much. A Reno. So if you're going out to hunt, then hunt a Reno, Prabhupada said. In this connection, if you are going to reach a goal, why not the highest goal? Why just some goal? Take the highest. So in this way of this love, uh, of this, of all these rasas, the love of Rata is the ground jewel of all goals of life, which is glorified by all the scriptures. So, if we are going out, why not for the topmost 
goal. And this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually giving us in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And he makes it very clear in the discussions with Ramananda Roy and Lord Chaitanya, it becomes very clear what is really the highest goal. Although Ramananda Roy is in another mood, in the end Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving Manjuri bath to everyone. Like Srila Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati, he was in another mood before, isn't it? He was a scholar and actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him the mercy So what is touched by a Chintamani gem of Mahabhav will also become Mahabhav. So in the next quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, it's still the same uh, spirit, the limit of perfection. The limit of perfection. So Sripad, here it's written, is the greatest receptacle of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grace. And therefore, he always relishes the sweetness of the highest form of Raganuga Bhakti called Manjari Bhav. In his Sadak Avesh, he first says, The love of Radhika and Madhava is able to carry the stream of the essence of the sweetest, passionate love rasa. It is a mutual love constantly increasing in sweetness and passion. So this is Anurag. It's constant and always increasing. And it's mutual, both sides. And this love between Radharani and her beloved is the limit of perfection if we serve in the mood of Mandri Bhav then it's also the limit of perfection for us. So in the same verse, another quote of Chaitanya Charit Amita, I found Radhikara Brema Guru Ami Shishyanat Sada Ama Nana Nache Nachaya Prabhat. Radhika's love is the Guru, and I am the disciple dancer. So even Krishna is telling here, the love of Radharani is my guru 
and I am the disciple dancer. She always makes me dance different dances. And Srila Ananda Das Babaji is writing here, this is Shiksha and Diksha in Rasa. In the material world, we first get Diksha and Shiksha before we begin Bhajan. But in the spiritual world, Diksha and Shiksha are themselves Rasa. Gurudev, could you please explain this a little bit to us? Religion, teaching, teaching, Sikha means teaching. Teaching means the religion how moves, how we have to develop relation, and relation is the basic thing to do. This is the Sikha. Basic thing is relation. If I have no relation, Sambandha, I cannot move for any feelings and love. And when we have relation, then we have to know myself and to you more closely that we have to live in material body as spiritual body. How we do? And we have to check when I do with material body job, how it gives comfort to me. And when we do in my spiritual body some services, how it was. But in tasteful form. This practical realization comes by Sikha and Diksha. So this Sikha also goes by listening and Sikha and Diksha also go by listening. By listening, how much I want to use, realize this, realize this, that is my experience. Without realization, that not become our subject. If I want to make subject, we have to go through to realize it. Siksha means the teaching, I am interested or not. If I am interested, I have to do full-heartedly. Then result will come. And when we receive the more mantra, so what is the meaning and how to understand and how to relate it,
and this we have to keep always conscious to at the time of doing so that way it become very progress in our life And this shiksha and diksha in rasa, how is it meant here in the connection with she always makes me dance different dances? She's my guru and I am the disciple. Shiksha give rasa and Diksha give bhav and Diksha give rasa. Diksha is giving bhav, feeling. And Diksha is giving rasa. When bhav with feel, uh, rasa, that is Ananda. So in this way, Radharani is giving Diksha and Shiksha to Rasa in person. <laughs> First, how she give herself her feelings? <laughs> Without how there is no rasa. No feeling. Without feeling, there is no rasa. If I have no feeling, it I will never relish rasa. Juicy. We have to develop our feeling. We lose our feeling. We have to increase our feeling to receive the rasa. The siksha is giving the feeling, feeling, and diksha is giving rasa. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Someone else want to share on this? So then I will go on. Sripad says, may our heart attain the highest perfection, which is the consciousness of Radha and Madhava's sweet forms, qualities, and pastimes. Yeah. So this is Shiksha and Diksha in Rasa. If we get forms, qualities, and pastimes of Radha and Madhava's sweetness. And this is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is distributing that So the next quote of Chaitanya Jarat Amitha I found in verse number 70. 
so it's about Radharani rushing out on Abhisa. While Shemati rushes out, floating on the waves of deep, passionate love for Krishna, Sripat, in his kinkiri form, follows her like a shadow. Wherever Srimati casts her glances in the forest, she remembers Krishna. Now comes the quote, Krishna Mai, Krishna Yara, Antara, Bahira, Yaha, Yaha, Nitrepode, Taha, Krishna, Spure. Chaitanya Charit Amitra. Krishna Mai means that she sees Krishna on the inside and on the outside. Wherever her eyes fall, there she sees Krishna. Here Srimati is called Premananda Rasaika Varidhi Maha Kol Kalola Malakula. How many waves of Prema Rasa are there? playing in this great ocean of loving ecstasy. This ocean of loving ecstasy is an ocean of Mahabhav. And the word Eka means Madan Mahabhav, which is the exclusive treasure of Sri Radha. How many waves aren't there playing in the ocean of Madan Rasa? That is Srimati's heart. <laughs> So wherever Radhika looks, she just sees Krishna. Whatever she hears, she just hears the glories of her beloved. Whatever sense impression she get, it's always just her beloved. When the manjari is giving massage, oil massage, she feels like Krishna is touching. So she's always completely immersed in that Krishna ocean. So we could try in our daily life, wherever we look, whatever we do, we just see the seva to Rarani. So also that quote is for us very practical connected to our household life. When we go to wash the car, it's not our car. It's the car we use for buying some ingredients, for cooking together with Radharani in the kitchen. So it's needed. We have to take care. We are doing it for Radha. When we cut some vegetables, we cut them for Radha. She's cooking for her beloved. When we are in these sharings, of course, we hear about the qualities. We remember Radha. We hear about her Lila Ras. 
So whatever we do the whole day long, we can try. So to get this connection, like her, wherever she looks, she just sees her beloved. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said we should be like a wife, household, a wife who is in love with someone, doing her duties perfectly and always thinking when can I meet this beloved person. And like always, Radharani is the perfect example. The only difference, we are not meditating about Krishna. We are meditating about her. How can we serve her? so that she can stay in her meditation. So what's going on with Trimati in this mood? When she sees a young Tamil tree, entwined by a golden Utica creeper with a peacock dancing before it. She thinks, ah, that's Krishna. Her eyes then roll of jealousy and she asks her friend Danishta, Danishte, what's that? Danishta replies, What? Where? Look before you. What's that in the forest? Danishta says, Just forest creatures, nothing else. Srimati says, Look, there's the ground jewel of cheetahs dancing, can't you see? Oh, cheetah, are your eyes closed? Srimati thinks that the Tamala tree is Krishna, the golden creeper is some other gopi, and the dancing peacock is Krishna's crown. This is one of the wonderful waves in the ocean of loving ecstasy. So whatever we do, we can try to see Radha in such a mood. We can remember her mood, how she is seeing everywhere her beloved, and in the same mood we want to see her. Like in the end of his prayers, Raghunadas at Radhakun, when Krishna came personally, Krishna came personally. The only interest, please give me the seva of your beloved, of Radharani. And he's telling, what is the use even of Krishna for me if I'm not in your seva, Swamini? Mm. 
So there's a say like, fake it until you make it, which means try to imagine again and again, till these pictures are coming from inside. Because when we try to do our smarana in that form, in every duty, in every activity, then one day it will come out of the mercy of Radha. The pictures will just come. I heard. I have no experience, but I was reading like that. So we can try. So that was the quote of Chaitanya Amrita in verse number 70 of Radharasa Sudhanidhi. The next one is in the next verse, 72. So here the topic is in the previous verse, Sri Pad, in his Sadakavesh, experienced the sweetness of Srimati's knitted eyebrows. And in this verse, he sees the sweetness of her sidelong glances. One single glance can enchant Krishna completely. Sri Radhika's glance has the power of the arrows of millions of cupids and agitates even Krishna, who is himself the transcendental youthful Cupid of Vrindavan. Vrindavana Abrakrita Navina Madana Kama Gayatri Kama Biche Yahara Upasana Chaitanya Charit Amrita How sweet is Srimati's puberty. Sri Rupa Goswami teaches us Rupam Kim Api Anil Yav no, Anirvachyam Tano Marduyam Uchyate Uchwalani Lamani Utipan 21. Madhuya means some indescribable physical appearance. How many streams of astonishment are caused by Srimati's indescribable sweetness as she enters the first stage of youth. Along with adolescence, the powerful King Cupid enters her childlike body. So in the beginning of Srimata's adolescence, if this is already so astonishing, then what to speak of her full adolescence? All these things can only be experienced in Swarupavesh, absorption in consciousness of one's eternal spiritual body. So 
So, as we heard, this is the presence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 